did the right thing with this uh, Bronco here. And I redid most of the suspension, went through uh, fuel and spark, and got that all done. Well, brakes, I ordered those and waited about six months before I opened the package and got them wrong. So I'm gonna redo this and we're gonna start by uh, not taking anything off because that's all gone already because I did that. And then I got this nice fancy kit over here that we're gonna try to put on so that I can get this Bronco back on the road for the first time in I think since 2004, so 16-ish years, I think. We'll see how this goes. We did the other side and it went pretty easily. Basically, it's just taking this all out and I'll have a little video of it and talking about it. Take this bracket off. You mess with this bracket back here, which is where the uh, flex line originally mounts. And then I'm just gonna start getting into it. This piece right here shouldn't actually be there because that's the kit that's, that was wrong. And then there should be, you know, uh, a drum right here. But we already we did that. So I'm gonna start pulling this apart here. Just a basic little Allen gets to it, grab it, twist it, good. Well, all the Allens are now out and this just kind of falls out here. The first thing that's gonna be here is a snap ring and you're gonna actually need a special tool for snap, or snap pliers here. See those go in here. It makes real simple work of that. And then there's this uh, collar ring right here. Come here. Right there that you're gonna have to get out with uh, a pick and a screwdriver, basically. You just go in here like that and it should. My other one came up pretty easily. Whoop, just like that. No. no. All right. Yeah, it did. Well, mine had some struggling coming out and it was just pushing and kind of caught that ridge a little bit. And then this has been obviously tampered with at one point in time. Let's see if I can get it to come loose a little bit here. All right. And those are the four wheel drive dog locks right there. Just those two things right here. And then uh, the axle nut is the next thing to come out. Oh, well, there's a spring here too, actually. The next major thing that needs to come out is the uh, spindle nut. And you've got a special tool as a spindle nut socket. I think it's, that's what it's called. Uh, this one's two and three eighths. You just get it here. Hopefully line that up. Grab your ratchet. And go. Should just come off pretty halfway easily in theory and then behind that is there, there's a little collar lock and it's kind of hard to describe as i don't know what i'm really talking about for it in technical terms but then you'll have another one of these spindle nuts right behind it that'll have a little nipple on both sides that you're supposed to lock or set that collar up with when it goes back together. Let's see if I can get it out. This will be a tricky part, more than likely for you. That's what it was for my me on the other side. Come on. Come on. Right. Well, I'm gonna do this with struggling off camera. From this point, after I get those uh, spindle nuts off, there's gonna be a bearing right here that's gonna come out with this knuckle or the spindle here, not the spindle, but make sure that you have those bearings if you're gonna actually use them again to not drop them everywhere. So just take that off. And I'm pretty sure this bracket here will actually be the bracket for um, the brake drum mounting or the brake drum backing plate and said it's this setup that was not right, but it is what it is. Just gonna take this off and then I'm gonna have to probably hammer this loose and I'll see if I can get a little bit of a video of that, but it's not really all that complicated. It's just getting 
rusted stuff apart. Since I have a new spindle here, uh, I'm just gonna sacrifice this one with the hammer because I'm not too worried about it because the other spindle seems to fit perfectly on the other side. So I'm just gonna hit here and here and just kind of break this free because the last time I tried to hit and find the uh, point to go from in there and it didn't work at all, so. The major things with this kit is it says take this off because there's gonna have I have a stainless steel line going from here to the back of the uh, uh, caliper, and then there's these right here that are gonna have to be clearanced. So just shave this nub and then grind this back a little bit so that you get an eighth of uh, clearance between that. And I have some before and after pictures that I'll show, but it's pretty easy. Just get a grinder, keep going to town, and it'll be cleaned up. I mean, I'm pretty sure almost all Bronco disc brake conversion kits for the first gens, you're gonna pretty much have to do that grinding, so. For this kit, uh, the first thing that goes on here is a spindle followed by the uh, backing plate, and then just kind of toss this on. There's a new crush washer, but my seal came already pre-installed, so I can't really go about putting that in now without messing up the seal, and I don't really want to. So I'm gonna put this on here, try to line that up as best as I can, and then kind of use this to set the bolt in, hopefully. Get it to go. go. Just so that it's all set up correctly. And then this side. Make sure that they're pointing inwards toward the inside part of the car. And these bolts go on. And I'm gonna spin these all down and then torque these all to 40 foot pounds because that just kind of feels about right, especially for the other side. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the hub and the wheel bearings in. And to do that, it's kind of hard to see and show you, but uh, I'm gonna spin the wheel bearing on by putting this one with the uh, nipple that I was talking about on like this. And then use a torque wrench and then put 50, p or 50 foot pounds on to this nut, back it off at least a half a turn, go back on and then tighten it to about 10 uh, pounds. And then again, back it off 3 16 And then from there, I have this just so that when I pull this in and out, I can get it off and then you see this little keyway area right here. Well, you're going to set that down in there and then while that's in there, you can either flip it back and forth to try to get that, these holes to line up with that nipple, or you can just kind of just barely maneuver that so that take that off, maneuver just a hair so that you can get that to line up this way. And then this one comes back in behind it and uh, torque that down to 80 foot pounds. And I'll talk about it while I do it again, but I just wanted to show, because otherwise it's kind of hard to see. I now have the spindle all greased up the way that I want it, and I'm gonna go about putting this hub on. And just, I have this seal greased and that surface greased so that I should have no issues with everything sliding on happily. All right, now I go grab my bearing, that bad boy in there, preferably flat, like that, and then make sure to grab the spindle nut with the nipple on it and face that out. And I really like to paint a little mark on here to uh, indicate where my 90 degrees is and all that kind of stuff when I'm comes to the foot pounds and releasing the pressure to see these bearings. And now we're gonna preset to a few like All 
All right, so now I'm starting to get pressure on there. This is really important to keep the bearings moving. So that it seats correctly and then I'm getting close. Did you hear that little baby click? Yep, there we go. Go here, spin it some. Come back in. And make sure it's still 50. Just a little bit. Spin it up. All right. And then. And then take this, back it off, at least that half turn. So that's why this uh, paint line is really nice to have because I can actually see where that mark is. Come off a full turn, bring it back, obviously. And then I have another torque wrench set up for 10 pounds because the other one doesn't like going that shallow. So, And that's just got a Little baby click right there. Sprint some more. And then now come back in and back it off. It says for Timken bearings uh, a sixteenth to a quarter or an eighth to a quarter turn. So we'll see if I can get that marked up right here. So I'm just gonna go to roughly about top. There we go. And then now this is the part where you try to line the dimple with one of these rings based on that keyway. So we can possibly see the thing that's right there on the left side. So I'm gonna try to get the nipple to fall into that ring off screen because otherwise it's gonna be hard for me to show anything and also see on my own, on my own behalf. All right, so on my first go, I actually got it. I just had to take it from the original way that I had it and flip it. So actually my paint is on the inside of it and not the outside. And at this point, I'm gonna go put this on, this secondary uh, uh, nut here and put that on at 80 foot pounds. And then at that point, I get to go and do the brakes for this whole entire system because I didn't have any brakes and I pulled them out last time when I was thinking I was gonna convert it all at the same time while I wait for the locking hubs because the spline in here is not the same as uh, what was on the truck originally. One of the uh, actual main reasons I tore out all the brakes was to convert this to a dual master cylinder with a boost because I just had the original single pot and that's how it went. And then I have a proportioning valve that I'm gonna place down here when I'm running the hard line. And then I lied, I'm gonna wait for those uh, new locking hubs after I put the uh, calipers on which I'm gonna do right now, because then I can run all of my hard line and have it all plumbed up and ready so that when this is here, when my locking, love, locking hubs are here, I can just go, have everything bled out and ready to go and hopefully run this thing and get it to actually stop for the first time in 15 years, whatever I said earlier. This kit I bought from uh, Wild Horses Motorsports. I think it's out of Cali. Um, and so far, everything but the locking hubs have gone to gone together splendidly and their instructions are super super user friendly which is way nice to have compared to uh other kits that i the other kit that i tried to buy um the torque specs though they don't mention anything on there but that's just kind of just a rule of thumb that for the bearings that timken has which is probably the brand that you should go with and then um that hub the spindle hub that i had to lock or to tighten on there that's just kind of a good uh, guesstimation of what I think it should be at. So I'm just gonna put this on here quick. And then afterwards, just go into uh, making all the hard line, which I'll probably do all off camera because it's a lot of tedious, just doing the same stuff multiple times kind of thing. Uh, I got the brakes ran while I was waiting for these new parts to ship. So. I gotta say for the first time of me doing uh, brake lines, I'll show you later. 
uh, doing brake lines myself for the whole vehicle, it actually turned out half decent. I just kind of have to button it into the frame and call it a day. But I got these uh, mile marker locking hubs that need to go in. And the last one had to be bumped in. So I don't know how tolerances are, but it goes halfway in. A little, little love taps. All right, and the next thing that comes is this little snap ring. Just goes in there. Push it in. And from there, the Wild Horses kit says that uh, for some of them that have this bolt drilled in already, or the hole drilled in already, you can use this instead of a snap ring because it changes the depth of the the lock ring that would be in there. Well, I got the uh, nut on and I stuck a pry bar in the back of the U-joint so that I could get that tight without it spinning. The last thing I gotta do before bleeding the brakes is put this thing on. We've uh, kind of started uh, just barely ble bleeding these uh, master cylinder, but uh, basically you just set it up here, you get these little cords here that wrap around and you go in here with a screwdriver, put on a vise, and you just push and you'll see the air pockets come and you got to just keep going until you see don't see any air pockets anymore well we have the uh master cylinder all bled out you can kind of check it out here it just does a little quick geyser when you open it and then there's no it's just fluid movement and no pockets of air coming around so undo this and walk it over, hopefully without spilling, to the uh, brake booster area. And then we'll undo these and put these back in. And hopefully, we have this rag here just in case, but hopefully we don't have to clean it up at all. So there. It's bolted up, so I'm gonna come in here and take these off, toss them in here, and try to not make a mess with it and also get the next one in in quickly but i also have the far side open so that when we start to bleed it out uh the fluid will just flow down there relatively easily and then once it is the fluid is there then we can start going through the actual brake bleeding process which will be quite long because all of these lines are brand new and have no fluid in them all right well we just got the brakes done. Pretty sure that's all done and golden. But in that time, it took me like three years to do brakes. Uh, I haven't ran this thing at all, so we're gonna try to get this running. It's got a new battery, it's got a new solenoid, new starter, new distributor, coil, rebuild, carb. So we're gonna try to see if we can get it to run. And then if we can, we're gonna just run it up and down the driveway and then try to get insurance on it. And just kind of see what happens. So let's see if we can get this uh, Bronco back on the road finally. <laughs> 